In this video, we'll be discussing about the pentose phosphate pathway, aka hexose monophosphate shunt. This pentose phosphate pathway mainly generates us three important molecules: ribose 5 phosphate, NADPH, and erythrose 4 phosphate. From this ribose 5 phosphate, we get the production of nucleic acids. Or we can say first we make the nucleotides from ribose 5 phosphate, and from these nucleotides we get the nucleic acids. Then we have the NADPH molecule, which drives us anabolic reactions in reductive biosynthesis pathways. Like we have the fatty acid synthesis, where NADPH acts as a reducing agent. The NADPH also aids in oxidative stress homeostasis like in the generation of ROS. And this NADPH is also important for cytochrome P450 enzymes. Then we move on to the third important molecule that's erythrose 4 phosphate. It's used in the synthesis of aromatic amino acids. Now let's see the pathway in detail. We see it is the glucose 6-phosphate molecule from where this pentose phosphate pathway starts. First of all, this glucose 6-phosphate molecule is acted upon by glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase enzyme. And in this reaction, the NADP plus acts as an electron acceptor and gets reduced to NADPH as shown in the diagram. So overall in this reaction that dehydrogenase enzyme drives oxidation reaction and we get the 6 lactone. Then in the next step lactonase enzyme acts upon 6 lactone in presence of water and converts it into 6 phosphogluconate. And this in turn is acted upon by dehydrogenase enzyme. And in this reaction, another molecule of NADP plus acts as an electron acceptor and gets reduced to NADPH also. And we also see here CO2 is getting generated out of this reaction. So overall, we see here 6 phosphogluconate undergoes oxidation and decarboxylation by 6 phosphogluconate dehydrogenase enzyme. And from this reaction, we get the ribulose 5 phosphate. This ribulose 5 phosphate is acted upon by phosphopentose isomerase enzyme and gets converted into ribose 5 phosphate. This concludes the oxidative phase or we can say oxidative reactions of pentose phosphate pathway. Now from here we start the non-oxidative reactions of this pathway. First of all this ribulose 5 phosphate is acted upon by epimerase enzyme and converts it into xylulose 5 phosphate. So now we have two products here, ribose 5-phosphate and xylulose 5-phosphate. From here, we start the non-oxidative reactions. First, we see transketolase enzyme acts on both the sugars. That means it acts on ribose 5-phosphate as well as it acts on xylulose 5-phosphate and converts them into pseudoheptulose 7-phosphate and glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate respectively. Then in the next step, transaldolase enzyme acts on these formed molecules and converts them into fructose 6-phosphate and erythrose 4-phosphate. And we know fructose 6-phosphate gets easily converted into glucose 6-phosphate. And this is the molecule from where we have started the pentose phosphate pathway. So we are back to the glucose 6-phosphate. On the other hand, we have the erythrose 4-phosphate. It's acted upon by transketolase enzyme and converts it into fructose 6-phosphate and also the xylulose 5-phosphate is acted upon by the same transketolase enzyme which converts it into glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. We know this molecule that is the glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate in a series of reactions gets converted into fructose 6-phosphate and this fructose 6-phosphate is acted upon by phosphohexose isomerase and gets converted into glucose 6-phosphate again as shown in the diagram. So here in this diagram we see these four molecules have the tendency to go into the glycolysis pathway and drive that pathway. Whereas this ribose 5-phosphate is used to generate the nucleotides from which we get the nucleic acids. So this is what the pentose phosphate pathway is. Like in oxidative reactions we get the two important molecules that we need. Whereas in the non-oxidative phase we recycle the glucose 6-phosphate back. Now one more thing to remember here is that why it's called shunt. 
Here we see in this diagram we have the glucose molecule that is driven into glycolysis and gets converted into pyruvate. That is the glycolysis we have already discussed that in the video. And it's here the sideway pathway starts where glucose 6-phosphate is acted upon by glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase enzyme and converts it into ribose 5-phosphate in a series of reactions which is the pentose phosphate pathway which we have already seen in the first part of the video. So this is why we call it a shunt pathway since we are pulling the glucose 6-phosphate from glycolysis into another pathway that is the pentose phosphate pathway. So it's kind of a shunt here. So this concludes our pentose phosphate pathway. I hope you like the video. If you like it, give it a thumbs up. Do consider supporting my work on Patreon or YouTube and make sure to subscribe to this channel. Thanks.